The Avenge Group is a leading infrastructure development group which incorporates the Grinica and LTA brands. Yes, indeed. The Avenge name came because it was part of the Anglo Vol Group, and those were indeed the entities that they acquired some time back in the 1990s. LTA, quite a well established name in the construction business, and Grinica, a family business established by Ola Grinica, who eventually ended up in Neisner building Samola, etc., etc. Anyway, those are the old days, the old history. It's also got a bit of manufacturing operations. Hasn't done too well recently. Market cap, we're sitting with 3.4 billion rand PE ratio of 12.7 and no dividend yield at this stage. Hasn't done too well of late, probably an understatement. Yeah, it's very similar to Murray and Roberts. In fact, I think it's slightly worse than Murray and Roberts. I think at the peak, the earnings were as high as 7 rand a share and they've come right back to where they were in 2004 before the boom even started. Now, Avenge always had one positive thing. They always had massive amounts of cash on their balance sheet. But that's all gone now. Now, it's a, it's a tough, tough business, and, and Avenge has unfortunately been one of the worst ones in that particular sector. And once you deplete that cash on balance sheet, you're sitting in a very precarious situation. Well, they have taken a few steps in yes. recent months to... To shore up some capital. Well, they sold uh, some land access facilities. In other words, uh, they sold a portfolio of land for over a billion rand to a property uh, holding company, the Collins Group. They are also offloading something in Australia. They have an Australian subsidiary called McConnell Dowell, which is a fairly big player there too and has done well. So they're sort of taking steps. But Avenge has always had an interesting business, big in mining, big in construction, and then it's got a steel merchanting business, which they're now called Avenge Steel or something. It's the old Trident business. Well, there we go. Yeah. There's the pain that we're seeing on the share price. Wayne? No, look, Bromin, it's very, very difficult here. I mean, they're raising, I think they've got to raise about, well, they want to raise about one and a half billion. Now, when you sell off your assets to raise cash flow to try and keep your underlying business working, that's never, ever a good sign. Are they going to be able to raise that money? No, I no, mean, no, are they've investors got the money. going I th I think to... The money's they've already, already done in. that. Yeah, it's already in. But once again, when you read their financials, it's just restructuring, reorganizing, disposal of non-core assets, all the things you actually don't want to read unless you're a truly deep value manager with very deep pockets and lots of time on your hands. How do you keep the story alive in a scenario like this? Look, you just have to hope that your customers catch a bit of a wake up. So, for example, the mining division, which is called Mulmans, I mean, they made packets and packets of money in the past building deep level shafts for the likes of Impala and Anglo Platinum. Those decisions are all being deferred. Everything else is being sort of frozen that hasn't been committed to already. So you just got to keep things tight, try and keep your costs under control, try and avoid getting into contractual disputes with your clients. Because that's, of course, one of the other things that characterize construction, apart from big revenues, low margins, is the unfortunate truth that there are often time delays and then fights that spring up with regard to whose fault it was. And that in an environment thing ran like this, budget. customer has to be king. So yeah. you, you okay. have got to bend over backwards yeah. for your customers. When you're competing in a, in a highly competitive market for the few contracts that aren't there, you cut your safety margins to zero. I mean, you mm -hmm. shave it and then you can't afford a problem. I just want to put another thing on the table because here we are talking about construction companies. We haven't yet raised the point that they all paid massive fines to the South African yes. government because of pa collusion apparent collusion. Over 2010 World Cup. And then and it turns yeah. out that the government has been colluding with senior FIFA officials about winning the cup in the first place. So now what? Yeah. I think they should ask for the money back. It's quite possible. No, but look, I don't I mean, know what to say on the issue. Yeah. I don't know what to say on the issue. Look, my own personal view, I think, I think they should have been prosecuted and not allowed to pay an admission a guilt fine because it's illegal. No, I know you take yeah. a very strong stance on So your on point corruption. is they shouldn't have rushed this thing to a conclusion and allowed everybody to pay these fines and make provisions guilty, for them. If, if so someone was guilty of a criminal offence, they should have been tried in a court of law and not just been able to pay with company money the admission of guilt fines. I mean, some of them were massive, eh? You know, maybe a government would rather take the money than the, than the guilt. I don't mm. know. All right. Well, well, that's, well that's a discussion for another day. Let's, let's leave it. Is the correct perspective absolutely hot or not on no. Avenge? No. Paul, hot no, or not? It's, look, it's kind of bottoming, but it's going to take a while before that confidence returns. Although I mention again, there are one or two of those key funds like Alan Gray that's been accumulating stocks in this space.